Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're working on a pressure washer. Don't know the history on it at all. I know it doesn't run. That's all I was told. Asked me to have a look at it, so I'm going to look at it. This is a Simonize branded machine. Looks like it's probably a 2500 PSI unit. It's got a 6 horsepower Mitsubishi on it. It's got old gas in it. So we'll go over a couple of initial quick checks here. And I'm sure the carb's got to come out. At least uh, get cleaned out. We'll probably pop it off there. Dunk it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Change out that old stanky gas. But uh, we're going to check for oil first. We're going to check for spark next. And uh, probably deal with the fuel situation. So I'll get you in the stand. Get some stuff gathered. Get things ready. And we'll come right back. All right, I shut the shop door. We've got a neighbor getting a tree limbed or something going on over there today, so we'll keep it a little quieter. Just gonna pull the dipstick here, check for oil, make sure there's oil in it. Yep, actually, it looks nice and clean too. It actually looks fresh, like it's never even run. It's that clean. We'll get that threaded back in there. Doesn't smell like gas or anything. It's just fresh, clean oil. Pull the plug wire off. I'm just going to stick a plug in it externally. We're likely going to end up changing this one anyways. I just wanted to do a quick spark check here. Oh yeah, good spark. Nice and solid. Still going to pull that plug out and have a look at it too. But uh, yeah, it's got oil. It's got spark. It's, got, it's a fuel problem because that is pretty stanky gas. Pretty old smelling. So the fuel valve is off. Pull the line off the carburetor, I'll let that drain into a container. We're going to see. Put it on. We'll start draining it into a white cup here. That'll tell us if there's any water in the bottom it's a lot easier to see yes I took a coffee mug out of the house to sacrifice for the cause out here that's clean well clean enough that we can check stuff with it I wouldn't drink out of it See what we got. Pretty gross looking. I don't know what the heck that's supposed to be, but it's not clean and clear. Almost looks like mixed gas. <laughs> it's pretty dark. <laughs> well, we'll let that drain out into a bigger container. There's not a whole bunch in it, but we'll get it all out of there. Might be some kind of stabilizer. I don't know. There is a screen, a strainer screen, on the bottom of the gas tank, so there's a little bit of flaky stuff in here. I'm not overly concerned because that screen will catch it. Yeah. That carburetor is definitely going to have to come off of there. Now, this, the, this is the exact shape I got the machine in, so it has no air cleaner on it at all. So I'm not sure. Thinking it should just slide off those studs. I'm 
I'm not seeing a nut on this end. And it's corroded enough on the other end that I can't really tell what's going on. So. I'm thinking the carb will just slide off. That's loose on there. And there we go. So we're gonna for testing we're gonna have to put nuts on this, these studs to hold the carb flat against the head so it doesn't have a vacuum leak. So the fuel line's off, we're gonna unhook the governor damper spring. There's only one hole in the top of the throttle, so can't mess it up putting it back together. There's a tiny hole for the spring and then there's a, a hole with a nylon grommet in it for the actual governor arm. I think the governor seat it's not moving very well. Hello. I won't be able to get that out. Yeah, maybe. Maybe with different pliers. There's not much of a Z bend on the end of that rod. Should be able to just no, nice and gentle pop her out. That carb should slide off now. I think this has been sitting for quite a while. Yeah. I can hear some type of liquid in the bottom of that carburetor. Might be a treat to find out what's in there. <laughs> Tank's just about bone dry. Give it a bit of a lean here. Put a little block under the wheel just to get it to drain more. Carbon's leaking. It's gonna get a dose of uh, 91 octane non-ethanol fuel already treated with Sea foam, because that's how I keep my fuel. That's what it's going to get when we're putting it back together. Looks like we got all we're going to get out of it. It's more of the same. That's pretty dark. We'll give that a wipe out, and uh, when I pull the bowl off the carburetor, we're going to see what it looks like in there for fuel. Wipe that cup again for when I take the, the coffee mug. When I take the bowl nut off, it's like a 12 mil maybe. Yep, and it's not tight. I know you can't see off the camera there, so. Pop the bowl, full of the same green crud, bunch of floaties. Bunch of rubbish in there. That'll all go in the ultrasonic anyways. I'll just tip the camera down to get a look at what's going on here. Possibly. Not that way, this way. All right, this needle only comes out one way. Pliers. Needle. Or sorry, the pin. 
needle and float. Let's check that. We're checking that needle to see if it's got wear on it. It should have nice flat lines. It should come down to a nice tapered point. If it's got ridges in it or if it's deformed it's not going to seal properly. That'll go in the ultrasonic cleaner as well. I use a Simple Green HD Pro. It's that purple Simple Green stuff. I use that in my ultrasonic cleaner. And it doesn't wreck rubber. Uh, it will soften up a gasket like this. It'll soften it. It doesn't destroy them. This one doesn't look too good in the first place. I might have to change that. But there's a small little gel on the side here. We're going to take that out and we're going to try and get that tube out of the center. Get some screwdrivers. If you don't take the one out of the side first, if you try and take the center one out, it'll usually boogers the threads. Because this jet is actually sticking into the threads just a little. So if it's got one on the side, take it out first. And it's plugged solid. So we can get down in there. Not with this screwdriver, not without wrecking the threads. This one? Nope. I might need to take some more off the side of the screwdriver. This is a very small carburetor. Hang on, I'm going to grind the side of this. Get a little skinnier. I've been going to do that for a while. Fits in there nice now. Nice engagement. Let's see. Oh, here, nice. I like it when they crack loose because these, these are usually plugged up. And there are tiny, tiny holes in most of these motion tubes. Like those ones. Let's see. Well, they look pretty clear. Don't matter. It's going to the old sonic cleaner anyways. And having a tube out allows more of the cleaner to get up inside here. Okay, that's done. We got a pilot here in the top. It's not an adjustable, it's just a, a fixed pilot jet. Get it out of there. That way the ultrasonic cleaner can get in there. Oh. Phone's ringing. Stand by. And we're back. Interesting phone call. He's interested in the mower I have out front for sale. It's a Toro 20 horse. 46 inch deck on it. It's all gone over. Actually, I think I did a video on it. I'm sure I did. And he asked me how much, and I told him, he's like, oh, I don't want to spend that kind of money. Okay. I said, what are you looking to spend? He goes, oh, maybe two, three hundred bucks. <laughs> well, I said, buddy, I spend more for that, more than that for them, and they're not even running when I get them. Well, good luck. So, in this, uh, this little pilot, there's a couple of holes. There's one there, there's one there, and there's a tiny microscopic one in the end. Before they go in the ultrasonic cleaner, I usually try and push a little wire through them to make sure that they're at least thinking about being clear. At least they're open to the idea. And... Gotta find the right side of the wire. Oh, come on now. What I use is uh, various sizes of guitar strings. They seem to work pretty good. A real small one works real good for a lot of these carburetors. Okay, I can see the wire going in the end. I can see it in, in one of the holes there. So I know it's at least partially clean. So that's good. Sometimes they can be really 
really goopy in there and they don't want to clear out. So I th well, I'll take the mixture screw out. It's got a uh, limiter cap on it. You can only turn it so much. So what I normally do is I just pop the caps off. You gotta be careful because sometimes you can actually break the end of the screw off. But I'll usually pop the cap off and I like I center it first in its travel. Like it, it goes from there to here. I'll center it in its travel and then pop the cap and then count how many turns it is to to get it removed. And that way I can set it back where it was and put the limiter cap back on. There's our limiter cap off. I'm just going to use a sharpie and mark one side of that so I can easily count it. So now we got uh, one side black, and the other side is naked. So there's one turn. One and a half. One and a half turns it was. So we'll take it right out, put it in the old sonic cleaner, let it put everything in the spring, the needle, and it'll open up the hole in the carburetor so the cleaner can get through it and do its job. And that's all I'm going to strip off this. I'm going to hit it with brake clean and uh, blowgun just to get most of the heavy goop off. Keeps the most of that stuff out of the solution. Helps the solution last a little longer. Actually, probably just dunk it in that old gas first. Shake it around a little bit. And then put it in the old sonic cleaner. So I'll do that. You don't need to listen to that buzzing away, so... I'm going to get it in the cleaner, let it do its thing. First thing, it'll, it'll, there, I'll check the float first. There's no, I don't see any cracks, I don't see any holes, and there's no gas in it, so float's okay. Yeah, so I'll let it buzz away, do its thing, and I'll come back when it's done its, have it a spa day. And we're back. <laughs> Fuel bowl, nice and clean. All my gazintas, nice and clean. I don't know what I would do without the ultrasonic cleaner. Well, I know what I would do. I would take 10 times longer to do anything with carburetors. So our emulsion tube is clean and clear. All the holes that are there are clear. I've blown everything out with compressed air. Let's drop that back in there. The carb wasn't overly dirty, but the small passages were plugged up, so that's all it takes. Snug, but not stupid tight. Because it's brass. So this little side jet is still got a little bit of junk in it, so we're going to hit, hit it with some uh, our string here. Give her a little poke through. Probably could have done that before I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Just give it a helping hand. It looks pretty clear now. I can see through it now. Strings pass through nice and clear and easy. Get that back in there. I said, get that back in there. So, we're doing these first initial steps here to see if the engine runs. We're going to spend some time, get it running. Oh, come on, get in your home. Spend some time, get it running, and most likely, we're going to find the pump is no good. Pressure pump. But, Step by step, you got to do things in order. Good and snug. It's nice, nice. Let's get this back in there. Oh no, my sharpie came off. <laughs> Put 
the spring on it. I know it's a turn and a half. I don't need a Sharpie to tell me that. Now, so we'll just run it in finger tight like it was. Finger tight and we're going to go half, one and a half ish. And then we'll snap our limiter cap back on it. Sometimes I just leave them off. Don't tell the EPA people that. <laughs> so our seat is nice and clean. The needle is now nice and clean. Float is in decent shape. We'll get that back down in here. Get our float pin back in there. Come on now, behave yourself. That back in the air. Just gonna give her a little gentle squeeze with pliers. Gentle. You break one of these off, you're gonna be having a bad day. So the float, the well, carb's upside down. The float is basically up. Blow in here, should not pass air. Doesn't. Flip it over, now the float drops, should pass air. And it does. Okay. Basic function test. It's okay. Put our bowl back on there. Wherever the heck the nut went, well, there it is, it's a bolt on this one. On some carburetors, this bowl nut is actually a, your, a jet. Not this one. Threader on there. Give her 12 M&Ms here on the wrench. Put our pilot back in. Which we already passed wire through. Ta-da! I don't see a reason why it won't run. It's got Sparky. It's got a clean carburetor. It's going to have fresh fuel in it. I am going to pull the plug out before I even try anything. But uh, I'm going to get this slid back onto its home and get that hooked up. Look way up. Slide this booger back on there. Find a couple of metric nuts in the junk bin. The bolt the front of that carburetor studs back down. That's on. Throttle linkage goes back on with a little twist. Just a slight flex of that rod lets it pop in there. Pretty good, pretty, pretty fortunate. Hook up our governor spring again, the damper spring. Fuel line. Give her a wiggle, get it on there. There we are. Clamp. Somebody's already boogered with it because the clamp was not in place, but I will put it in place. Now it's in place. Fuel tap is still off. Fuel tank is empty. Again, no air cleaner. A lot of times carburetors run different without an air cleaner in them. Sometimes that air cleaner, the air filter, is just enough of a resistance to run, make the carburetor run a little richer. Some engines need it. What size is that plug? 13 sixteenths. You still seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah. Okay.
Not that old, but it's a non-name. Where's why is it there? Non-name brand. You know what? I'm just gonna check the gap and put it back in. I'll stick it in the spark plug boot there. Make sure it sparks, and then I'll just stick it back in. What do you guys think? Twenty-eight thousand should be enough. Zero two eight. I think it'll be enough. Let's give her a pull. Lots of spark. Lots of spark. Nice. Back in she goes. Now see the top of the piston. It is spotless. It's absolutely spotless. There is no carbon on the top of that piston. Huh. Okay. Again, I don't know the history on this thing. All I know is it doesn't run. Or didn't. Well, still don't know if it does. Should. If I do get it to fire, as soon as I get it to fire, I'm going to shut it off. Because I don't want to run that pump without any water in it. If it does fire, I'll have to drag it outside. Hook up a hose. And see what happens from there. Okay. Tank's as clean as it's going to get. Here's our 91 non-ethanol seafoam enhanced fuel. Don't need to fill it for testing. Make sure there's enough in there to cover the screen. Eh, we'll splurge a little more this morning. That'll do. That'll do. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'm going to open the fuel valve, open the fuel valve and just give it a second or two or ten to see if the carb overflows. If the needle and seat and the float are doing their job, they shouldn't overflow. We'll just give it a little, just give it a second here to check. So while it's filling the fuel bowl, I'll grab a couple of uh, metric nuts out of the bin. Might be easier said than done. And I should have a couple in here somewhere. One, two. You need to be able to bolt this carburetor. You need to squish the gaskets behind it. Make sure there's no vacuum leaks. No air cleaner. I believe this would have had like a flat Honda style air cleaner with just like a foam on the inside. I don't think they have much restriction in them anyways. Oh, this should this should run like like normal. <clears throat> but it won't run right if it's not tight. Okay, I'm not seeing anything overflowing. We're set our throttle about halfway. Choke fully on. Give her a pull. The throttle does nothing. I don't want to run it too long, like I said. By going from slow to fast, does nothing in here. So, I think we've got something seized up in there. I'll just take that apart. Oh, it's all rotten to hell in there. <laughs> yeah, she rotten. Like I said earlier, I think the governor's shaft is tight. Seized. Phillips screw here. Phillips screw here. Phillips screw here. There's a little shield to come off. We can have a look in there and see what the heck is going on in there. The governor's not moving. So 
So going like this is not pulling, not moving the governor to allow it to spin faster. One. This is our fuel valve. It goes through the bolts to that cover. There's two. There's three. Let's see if we can wiggle this out of here. I'm going to tear the whole thing apart. Nice. Oh, yeah. I don't know where this was stored, but it's rotten. I'll get you out of the stand, get you a look in there. Whoa, whoa. Ain't that pretty. It's rotten. We got some penetrating oil in there and give her some work in there's that's the governor arm here and it goes straight back but that shaft goes into the casing of the motor and it should be moving oh, it's our engine and it should be moving and it isn't so when you throttle that's off that's turtle that's rabbit when you pull it to rabbit it should actually tension this arm it's not tensioning it because the throttle plate is, I can't even see it, almost closed. Yeah. Looks closed. The governor's not letting it move. Oh, yeah, yeah. Moving if I push on it hard. So I'm going to get that sprayed down with some penetrating oil and let it soak and sit and work it in. And we'll come back. Whoa, hit the stop button already. All right, so I got the governor freed up and it's working as good as it's gonna work. It's a little sticky yet, but it does behave for the most part. But uh, underneath on the throttle linkage, there's the uh, the kill. When you shut the, when you move the lever down to off, it grounds the coil and kills the spark. And that little plastic piece was boogered. So it was no good. So it wouldn't shut off if we tried. So all I did was I put a toggle switch in. That, the one wire running to it is the ground kill wire and the other wire out of the other side of the toggle switch just grounds to the chassis. So when you shut this off, it technically the switch is on, but <laughs> when you shut this off, it creates this, it completes the circuit from the ground of the chassis to the coil and kills the spark. So it's, based, it's just a toggle switch. So everybody knows that up is on and down is off. If you, I were to, if I were to put the plate on there that indicates on and off, it would be upside down. So this actually reads on and that reads off, but it doesn't matter because I'm trying to complete a circuit, not break a circuit. It'll work. At the end of the day, it'll work. So let's get this thing outside. We'll get it fired up see if it makes some pressure and uh, hopefully get this back to the customer shortly. I have other things to do as well. So I'm going to regroup outside. We'll get, uh, I'm going to get the hose and everything ready. I'll get the camera out there and see if she makes some pressure. So I got the garden hose hooked up. I have the pressure hose hooked up. The water is on. So always make sure you purge your lines, you purge your hose before you fire it up. That way there's no air bubbles and the pump doesn't cavitate and overheat. So I'm going to go over there, squeeze the trigger make sure the water flows freely out the end of the pressure hose and then we'll fire it up but I forgot a nozzle so I gotta go get one all right got the nozzle
Oh, that seemed to work okay. I think they'll be happy. Whoa, jeez. Easy now. I think they'll be happy with that. So that's our Simonized 2500 PSI pressure washer. Just get it to run video. <laughs> not sure how long it's going to run. That pump is in pretty tired shape. The governor's not 100%, but there's really not a whole lot I can do with it without taking all the engine apart because that shaft is seized. It's a steel shaft through an aluminum housing and it's seized in there. It's working. It's just not free. So, Anyways, I'm going to turn off the water, unscrew my hose because that hose is off my pressure washer. And this one's ready to go back to the customer. That's all they wanted. They didn't want it rebuilt. They just said, see if we can get it to work. So, on that note, we're going to end this video. Thanks for joining me, guys. Don't forget to smash that uh, thumbs up button. Click the subscribe icon and the bell icon to notify you when I upload new videos. Until the next one, guys. Thank you, and take care.